so Dr. Sellers uh, has been kind to take time off her uh, busy practice. She is a, uh, a clinical uh, psychiatrist and a uh, specializes in addiction psychiatry, and she's going to speak on um, uh, basically the mental uh, preparation and dealing with anxiety and the whole different process. I'll, let's see. Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Stuller. I'm a board-certified adult and addiction psychiatrist. They asked me not to speak because they think that you're about to commit suicide or homicide in your department or overdose on too much pot because you're freaked out trying to study. Uh, I'm here to try to inspire you, to help you manage anxiety, which is the most awful human emotion that one has to tolerate. Of interest, my nephew is a trauma anesthesiologist, and we often laugh that becoming a medical doctor or a medical physicist is like an ant eating the world. It takes forever to get to this point. Uh, And medicine, in general, is a fear-based learning experience. So it's a very uncomfortable um, way to learn and to process through this information. Uh, For a moment, though, I want everyone to take a deep breath You guys are in a very unique situation. Give gratitude to the fact that you are in a very elite group of people. Probably less than 1% of the people in the world know how to do what you do. And so sitting for the boards is a good thing. You're almost to the end of your formal academic career. Be sure you don't get hit by a bus. I'm not kidding. Look both ways. I tell the medical students this all the time. Um, But the quality of your life is about to tremendously improve. You're going to go from being a broke graduate student to making good money, and you're this close. Enjoy your preparation also. You're not alone. Other people are out there suffering with you. I remember like on a Saturday Saturday afternoon, people would be running out to the movies, and I was having to sit there studying pre-calculus or whatever the subject was. Um, But so were all the other people in this room doing that. So don't feel bad about that. Now, here's the reality of the situation. If this looks like any of your offices, I remember sitting in a room like this right before my addiction boards with that bad feeling in my stomach because I knew on Monday morning I'd have to go back to this. And the reality is we're all busy. They're making you work. You're trying to study. You have husbands, carpools, kids. It's, it's a mess. So you really have to allot your time to get ready to study. Tell your family and friends, I am preparing for my boards. This is a six-month process. Please be patient with me. They'll remember that for about a day or so. And then, <laughs> honey, can you pick up the groceries? Can you get the kid? Uh, you'll be right back to square one. So constantly remind them that you're in this process. Now, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got from an attending is he said that passing your boards is an acquired skill. Passing your boards is an acquired skill. There are those of you that have gone before who will show you how to do this. Your sitting here today is an investment in your ability to pass these boards by having a specific strategy uh, and to figure out how to work with groups and to pull out what is important. Um, the attending said he used to, uh, he was good at crosswords, then he started doing the New York Times crossword puzzles and he got his butt kicked. But he said the more he did it, the better he got at it. And it's the same thing with your written and your orals. The more you do it, the better you will be. Now, I do brain spect imaging in one of my clinics where we use it as um, a diagnostic tool in psychiatry. The, the, what looks like the nose and the eyes and the dot on the forehead, the nose is where your depression lives. That's the deep thalamic limbic area. The basal ganglia looks like the two eyes, and this is um, where anxiety lives. The, on the left side of your brain is language. It controls language, so this is where you will be verbally irritable, bitchy, snippy. Right-sided basal ganglia, you will internalize your anxiety. And the cingulate, which is the tip of the cingulate that you see at the top, is where you will ruminate or get stuck on these loops of negative thought. Um, A patient like this would have a very hot kind of OCD pattern where you're tending to constantly ruminate on trying to get through this test. And I want to help you to focus on what's important. Now, um, Watch your language and your feelings that go with it. If you're a race car driver, the first thing they teach you how to do is to come out of a spin or how do you get out of a freak out. 
most people will go where they focus. If you're a race car driver and you're in a spin, if you look at the wall, guess what? You're going to crash into the wall. So you want to try to direct your focus back downstream. Uh, remember that uh, passing means focusing downstream to your long-term goal. If you say, I'm focused on not failing, you might fail, versus if you say, I'm focused on passing, you might pass. So again, be careful with your use of language. Again, you are not alone. Uh, you're going to be repeating this track with colleagues. Um, be supportive with your colleagues. Try not to hoard or hide material. Uh, I was always grateful for fellow doctors who would say, oh, my God, I killed a patient today because I gave potassium chloride. It should have been sodium chloride because uh, they were willing to get out there and help. Share with each other because in real life, once you get past these boards, it's no longer competitive. It's more collegial, and you'll be working together for the good of your patients. Your expertise in this area is going to help thousands of patients. I was at a Christmas party last year, and there was a CPA there, and he goes, God, he goes, I wish sometimes I would have chosen a career in medicine because I prepare people's taxes every year, and although it's okay, medicine is a constantly evolving specialty. Uh, you're in an elite position, um, and working as uh, colleagues uh, has enormous benefits. And for every patient that you help, you're helping those family members out there. So when you're in the trenches studying and you feel like you can't memorize one more calculation, remember that your patients and your patients' families are counting on you to do well, and they're also pulling for you. And to get to the finish line, which also includes good financial incentive, passing your boards puts you in an excellent negotiating position with hospitals. You can pick up ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars easily with board certifications, uh, but it also sends a message to the world that I am competent in my specialty. Now, the goal is to have a relaxed focus. Now, you have to be calculated and you have to do your homework to get ready for this exam. But if you can execute with a relaxed focus, you're going to be right on target. Um, relaxed focus means that you can uh, execute uh, with calmness and with confidence. Uh, and occasionally you're going to have those freak out moments. And I'll tell you more about that in a moment. So I'm going to teach you quickly how to own the zone. Now, I counsel executives and famous athletes and corporate uh, big boys and girls, and you can be smart and you can be fast, but if you don't take care of your brain health during this preparation process, you may crash and burn. I've seen excellent marathoners who do not, uh, if they're not hydrated, they can't finish the race. These are simple little things. So here's a couple of these points. Hydration is huge. Your brain is 80% water. You must be hydrated to deliver the goods to your body. Uh, a simple rule of thumb is to take your body weight, divide it in half, and that's how much water you should drink every day in ounces. Or you can get a 32-quart container, um, fill that up three times a day, and drink that to stay well hydrated. Um, the omega-3 fish oils or the omega-3s are huge. Your brain is a big blob of fat. Um, long, um, the um, fish oils or algae-based oils, omega-3s, are long-chain fatty acids. They improve synapse conduction time. We see it uh, calm down over anxiety on the scans, and it also has uh, a wonderful anti-inflammatory effect. Uh, if you're a vegetarian, you can also get algae-based oils. If you buy crappy, cheap fish oil, you may get mercury poisoning. Uh, if you get an algae-based oil, these are, um, Martech is the company out of Colombia. They actually harvest algae to produce the highest producers of EHA and DHA, uh, and you get an uncontaminated pure. We also use this in pregnant women, uh, nursing mothers, and children. Multivitamins are huge. If I give you 5-HTP, which is the precursor to serotonin to help with depression, anxiety, and sleep, and you don't have enough B6 on board, which is a necessary cofactor, you cannot convert your final set of neurotransmitters. If I'm taking a vitamin and you're not, I've got a 20% edge on you in that exam. I'm more likely to perform better just because my uh, neurotransmitters are operating at 100%. 
learn to pack food. I was an awful eater as a medical student, but when I got to residency, I wised up real quick because you're putting in long hours. Most of you guys are going to work a full day in the clinics. You're going to go home. You got to feed the kids. Now it's 11 p.m. You're just sitting down to start your studies. On Sunday nights, I pack up my medications and supplements for the week, and I make a bunch of little baggy bags of apples, uh, uh, nuts, which are a huge source of your omega-3s, apples. It's much easier to grab this than uh, M&Ms and a Dr. Pepper. Green tea. Uh, green tea has L-theanine in it. It also has half the caffeine that coffee does. And uh, there's a neurotransmitter called glutamate. In high levels, glutamate is very toxic to the brain. You knock off neurons. Green tea is a glutamate antagonist. This is why the Chinese live much longer. Uh, they drink a lot of green tea. Foods that are colorful are excellent antioxidants, blueberries, uh, squash, uh, which is bright yellow, um, oranges. Uh, eat bright colored foods. These are antioxidants. They uh, will improve your production. Tuna is a wonderful source of serotonin. Spinach is a wonderful source of serotonin and protein. Uh, high protein and low complex carb diets are excellent brain food. This is one of the most important changes I made it during my academic career, and I improved about 20 percentage points on my national boards and my last set of boards by making the proper brain changes. One is I used to grab a Dr. Pepper and a pizza at 11 p.m. on call for a 48-hour stretch, and I finally learned how to make high-protein shakes or veggie shakes, and you add in um, a low-complex carb or fruit. And the next day I would notice that at 11 a.m. post-call, I was able to outlast and outthink my colleagues who had been drinking Dr. Pepper or pizza the night before. Uh, if you get a magic bullet, you can mix these up, throw a top on, put it in your backpack, throw it in the refrigerator, uh, and you're good to go. Optimize your levels. If you have time to get to your primary care, people with low vitamin D levels are very susceptible to seasonal affective disorder, um, and it also will mess with your overeating. Um, vitamin D controls the fat hormone leptin, uh, so if vitamin D is broken, you're more likely to overeat. Also, vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, so you just don't want to randomly take vitamin D3. You want to know what your level is and optimize it. The thyroid is critical. If you have a propensity for anxiety or depression, if your thyroid's going in one direction, it looks like depression. The other direction looks like anxiety. Uh, you want to be sure that your thyroid levels are optimal for optimal academic performance. Uh, you can use natural stimulants and relaxants. L-tyrosine is the amino acid precursor to norepinephrine and dopamine. This is what you need for your prefrontal cortex, which, by the way, continues to grow until you're 25. Um, cabinase is a GABAergic, which is very calming to the brain. Uh, it cools off your temporal lobes, helps to calm anxiety. If you have the smarts and you have anxiety, it can make you look like you have attention deficit. By cleaning up your diet or adding something GABAergic, it will give you that relaxed focus that we've mentioned. Study environments are important. I found that I would get restless. Sometimes if I stayed at home to study, I'd start cleaning the whole house, uh, sorting through the mail, vacuuming, anything to do but study. So I'd have to retreat to the library occasionally. Of course, that involves a lot of crap because you've got to pull all of these gazillion tons of study materials with you. Don't be afraid to change study environments, but be careful that whatever the study environment, stay away from anxious people because often you get to the library and then you've got a classmate who's trying to procrastinate and they want to come over and chat at your station. Remind them, just like you do your family members, I'm sorry, I'm preparing for my boards. I have 30 minutes and this is it. I'm, I don't mean to be rude, but I please uh, leave me alone so I can get back to work. Uh, exercise is critical. Even if you can't get out of your house, uh, my sister's an attorney. Before she would see you, she would make you for divorce. She'd make you start walking, and she'd make you buy a can of cow can dog food. We live in Louisiana to go throw it around the garage to get some of the rage out. Even if you just hang a boxing bag and hit on that for about five or ten minutes, when you exercise, you perfuse blood and oxygen to your brain. You release your endogenous endorphins. You're going to be brighter, sharper, smarter. 
learning to breathe, it sounds simple, breathe in, breathe out. When we get anxious, we get shallow breathing, we get dizzy, um, we start to feel very scattered. Catch yourself when you're studying if you feel dizzy or confused. Chances are you've gotten out of position physically and you're uh, breathing too quickly. Just take a few deep breaths, remind yourself that you're in control and that you can do this. Now, I call it the five-minute rule and the 20-minute rule. Half the time, none of us feel like studying. We're tired. We're overwhelmed. If you can just sit um, down and put in five quick minutes, you usually will find yourself engaged. Another wise attending said if you can spend 20 minutes a day minimal every day studying, even if you all you can do is 20 minutes, it will minimize anxiety. Another thing that he taught me was take journal articles and tear them out of your of your journals. So if you have to go to Vancouver like this, you would just bring a couple articles with you, leave them in your car while you're waiting in line for the bank. You'd be surprised. You can get a lot of extra reading time and study time in doing this technique. Now, for those of you that are pot smokers, um, yes, it's better, uh, at least it's not crack. However, on spec scans, we see hypoperfusion of your prefrontal cortex when you smoke pot, so it, it's kind of making dumb dumber. It will uh, impair your concentration and attention. It also s- decreases blood flow to your temporal lobes where you can get short-term memory or paranoia. Um, so don't kid yourself. Also, in real life, if you have a pot habit now, Uh, You need to get with the program. I spend half my time counseling corporate Americans who are dot-commers. They're making a million dollars a year, but they can no longer smoke uh, pot at the Four Seasons for their kid's eighth birthday. Uh, They're losing uh, money because they have to go out and score their pot during the day. And hospitals are going to be monitoring your urines. Uh, they've gotten very serious about this. I sit on a board where we impair physician. We oversee case management of physicians who um, have problems with addiction. Uh, sooner or later, it comes back to haunt you. Also doing pot, you run the risk of getting arrested. Sooner or later, your lines dry up. You get arrested. It's very hard to get a job when they look back into your legal background. It's something that can come up to haunt you. So you've come too far. Uh, learn to control this by working with a physician where you're doing legal things to help calm your natural anxiety. Sleep is critical. You need at least seven hours of sleep a night for the best optimal perfusion, minimally. If you're getting less than seven hours a night, uh, this can be a problem. Things that help with sleep that are calming, often warm milk, L-tryptophan, which is the precursor to um, 5-HTP, which is the precursor to serotonin. Some people will use kava kava or um, um, uh, GABA. All of these are very, very helpful. Finally, focus is very important. Every night before you go to bed, until you take your exams, I want you to imagine that you're sitting as floating in the room of your exam and that you can see yourself sitting at your desk or your computer or in front of your examiners. And I want you to imagine that you look nice and relaxed, that you're poised, you're working through, and suddenly you see me across the room and you look over at me and I want you to wink at me. That means that you're pretty relaxed, that you can wink, okay? Now, I know that's easier said than done. Often I tell my patients if they look really tense, I'm like, put your hands in the air. Are you floating? No. Then lighten up. So often we can get so overwhelmed uh, that we begin to freak out. So remember to lighten up as you go through. This is just another little stepping stone. Also, uh, one of the recent, about three years ago, the winner of the British Open worked with his sports psychiatrist, to work on practicing holding up the claret jug in victory. So imagine yourself getting your passing exam results, running around, acting like a fool, calling the family. So have these positive mental images every night at bedtime. Also, because I work in the addiction business in the inner cities of Baltimore, Philadelphia, I deal with people in every stage of relapse um, uh, at some course in their addiction. If you catch yourself being anxious, it means that you're too far in the future or too far in the past. Uh, oh, my God, I'm a failed exam. I'm going to be homeless. I'm going to be in soup kitchens. You'll play it to the whole horrible extreme. Or, um, oh, my God, I forgot to study this. They're going to nail me on this. I just know it. Come back to the present moment, do the task at hand, a minute at time, five minutes at time, but hear me in your head saying get back to the present moment and do the best you can at that time. You are in control of this. 
Um, so good luck with your exam. I've also prepared a handout for you, which goes over a lot of um, anxiety calming techniques and I've recommended some books that you may want to look at as well. You're going to be fine. Uh, you're not doing this alone. Count on each other for help. And by being here today, you've already given yourself an enormous advantage. Thank you for allowing me to speak today.